AUV IITV is a multidisciplinary team of 52 members focused on developing autonomous underwater vehicles from perspective to handle real-time tasks. The vehicle is capable of waypoint navigation, object detection, robotic activation, acoustic communication, etc. underwater. The team has four subdivisions, namely software, mechanical, electrical, and business. The mechanical subdivision is responsible for the ideation, design, analysis, fabrication, and assembly of the vehicle. The aim is to build a vehicle which is stable, compact, modular, and can perform all the tasks. Broadly speaking, the subdivision's work can be divided into hulls, frames, and manipulators. Hulls are the waterproof enclosures housing the electronics, sensors, and water sensitive components. The making of the hulls undergoes a rigorous process consisting of ideation, design, simulations to analyze failure, fabrication, assembly, and final waterproofing before the electronics are assembled in them. Matsya 6 broadly consists of two categories of hull shapes, cuboidal and cylindrical, attributable to the easy and cost effective manufacturing processes. Cuboidal hulls Matsya 6 consists of three hulls, cuboidal in shape. DVL hull M6 has the same DVL hull as M5 and accommodates the DVL sensor. Main hull, as the name suggests, this houses all the electric boards, GPU, SBC, and DAC. EAC hull, a completely new hull, this consists of all the 8 EACs and circuitries for its application. The making of this hull leads to a significant reduction in the volume occupied by EACs initially by 60% and a better heat dissipation. Now coming to the cylindrical hulls. The battery hulls and camera hulls this time are cylindrical making them lighter than their previous cuboidal counterparts also providing a better space optimization. The battery hull design is enhanced incorporating the hot swappable battery feature. The battery hulls are mounted on the either side of vehicle that is port and starboard providing a higher CG and CB control. The camera hulls are mounted towards the front and bottom of the vehicle for a better field of view. Kill switches Our vehicle is equipped with a total of 4 kill switches. These kill switches are custom designed for underwater purpose and tested up, up to the depth of 30 feet underwater. The frame of the vehicle is designed in such a way that the vehicle is very modular. It is designed based on the spatial position of all components and also based on the various loads that different components exert on it. The parts of the frame on which heavy parts are mounted are designed so that it has a high load bearing capacity in the vertical direction. The parts of the frame where the thrusters are to be connected are designed based on the force and torque the thruster would be exerting on it. The frame is designed using minimum material to reduce weight and is shaped to be thicker only in regions of high stress. Thruster positioning We want the vehicle to have maximum velocity in the surge direction. So we use three thrusters positioned at the vertices of an isosceles triangle. Positioning them in this way allows the surge thrusters to be also used for pitch and yaw control. The heave thrusters are also placed in a similar manner. The sway thrusters are positioned such that they are equidistant from the center of gravity. A total of 8 thrusters have been used in Matsya to provide all 6 degrees of freedom to the vehicle. Frame being the vehicle's exoskeleton, the results of the frame simulations play a crucial role in understanding and improving the design of the vehicle. We perform various simulation synapses which uses finite element analysis for its simulations. The various simulations include Frame width, hulls and thrusters. This test ensures the basic ability of the frame to sustain the weight of the hulls, arm and the force of the thrusters. Crash analysis of rear end of the frame. Having three thrusters mounted on, the rear end of the frame was a high stress area. With few iterations of simulations and CAD changes, we successfully built a rigid rear end of frame. We performed mesh independency tests to make sure we had accurate results in our hand. We maintained our safety factor in between 1.5 to 2. These simulations helped us in knowing the vehicle's resilience to various possible stresses that could have been encountered during the runtime. The base plate of the main hull of M6 was completely changed from the previous version in order to combat the heating issues faced by the vehicle. The stock fans on the GPU proved ineffective in the old case since it continuously pumped hot air into the main hull. This caused a rise in the ambient temperature of the hull which led to multiple system failures. So we decided to use the environment to our advantage by using the water outside the vehicle as a cooling system. Hence, CFD simulations were performed to get an idea of the flow rate required for effectively dissipating the heat released by the GPU. A proof of concept experiment was also conducted for validation. Finally, the design of base plate was changed so as to mount the GPU directly onto it. Arm and Gripper Matsya 6 has a 1 degree of freedom arm with humerus and ulna connected by a revolute elbow joint. The gripper is mounted at the end of the ulna and has a pneumatic piston actuation system based on lever mechanism. 
With this mechanism, the fingers follow a circular trajectory that gives us a large gripping area. The split finger design helps in gripping bottles at different angles of approach. These fingers are completely 3D printed. The simplistic design of whole arm and grip assembly gives us sufficient workspace to attempt pick and place tasks for the competition. The whole assembly is mounted on the front end of the vehicle on the right side of the camera. Torpedoes Much 6 has a high pressure pneumatic based torpedo shooting mechanism. These torpedoes have twisted fins at the end to provide gyroscopic stability, allowing them to travel in a straight line with minimum deviation. Marker Dropper Much 6 has one marker dropper with a reloading capacity of two markers. The actuation marker dropper is brought about by a pneumatic air cylinder similar to that of the gripper. The electrical subdivision is responsible for designing of custom PCB boards, programming them, soldering them. We also manage the electrical wirings inside the main hub. The current electrical stack consists of four boards, the power board, the GPI board, the back plane and the debug board, all of which are interfaced using the controller area network protocol. Power board. This board is responsible for the generation of various voltage rates, namely 5 volt and 12 volt. It has various safety functionalities like battery bus protection, over voltage protection and current source protection. It also monitors the current to the battery and its terminal voltage. It has 8 independent sensor toggle lines which are controlled using microcontroller. GPIO It has two different microcontrollers that are capable of controlling the vehicle independently in case any one of them fails. It generates 8 PWM and has capabilities to drive 4 solenoid valves. It also has double layered protection for thruster kill in case of malfunction. First is shutting down the thrusters using software signals and the other is to shut down the battery supply completely. Debug This board monitors voltages and currents across the sensors, boards, thrusters, batteries, etc. It also displays all the data on an LCD screen for easier debugging. It logs electrical events to the SD card for future reference and it also communicates with SBC directly over UART for real-time decisions based on these events. Backplane This board acts as a bridge between all the electrical boards and rest of the vehicle. It distributes communication signal across the boards and distributes power to all the sensors from the power board. Onboard computer. We use B360N motherboard equipped with hexa-core i7-8700 with 8GB of RAM and 512GB of storage. GPU We use a dedicated desktop grade GPU, the NVIDIA GTX 1660 Ti, a 6GB graphics card for faster image recognition using YOLO V3. Hi, the software subsystem of AUI2B currently consists of 12 members from various departments. We work on localization, control, vision and machine planning parts of the vehicle, which in turn makes it autonomous. We also work on simulation of the vehicle in competition environment for end-to-end -end testing of the software part. Auto-tuning The controller package relies on the careful tuning of parameters like PID gains and thruster correction values for optimal performance which were previously tuned manually. To streamline the testing process, we employ auto-tuning methods. PID tuning is achieved by identifying a first-order model through heuristic methods and then applying an evolutionary algorithm to identify PID gains. Thruster correction values are identified by studying vehicle motion and applying a binary search algorithm. Mounting box plugin for Gazebo We have created a plugin for Gazebo that automatically draws bounding boxes around tasks seen in the camera feed during simulation. This removes the need to manually label images that are used for training our YOLO network. The boxes are drawn by taking a perspective projection of the task with respect to the vehicle and then detecting if the projected points of the task are in the frame. Map GUI and 3D Plotter The Map Plotter GUI helps visualize the location of tasks for the competition from information gathered during practice runs. The Map GUI is a GUI tool that allows dynamic modification of locations of tasks and landmarks. The data of task locations is then used by the map plotter to generate a pre-machine 3D visualization for the user. The task location data can then be used by the vehicle during competition runs. Mission Plan Last year's Mission Plan had a highly modular task subtask architecture which allowed us to order tasks intelligently by clubbing similar tasks together. This planner required a number of parameters to be updated before deployment. 
which is infeasible in a high pressure competitive environment like that of Robusa. We develop the basic mission planner which inherits the idea of task grouping and decides the order of tasks in an almost linear fashion with a significant decrease in the number of parameters. Sometimes due to an un unexpected glitch, we might not be able to perform a task. In this case, the hard-coded backup task would be used. Competition strategy. This year, we decided to aim for G-Man and its associated tasks due to the very well-defined images associated with them. So as to maximize our score, we would attempt all the bonus tasks, starting at a random position, performing style moves as we pass through the gate, opting for the random finger, shooting through both the ellipse and the trapezium of the torpedo task, dropping markers in the closed section of the bin and surfacing up through the octagon with the bottom. Also, we simulated the task using OpenCV image detection as we didn't have the resources for YOLO network training, but we are pretty confident based on performance in previous year's tasks, YOLO would work here too. Gate task The gate task this year has an additional feature of having images placed on it. So, compared to last year where we were trying to detect the poles of the gate, this time the images can give us a higher accuracy of image detection using YOLO network. The LX stack being quite stable inside the hull will make the style aspect of the task much easier. Post completing the gate task, we plan to follow the path that leads to the void task by aligning Munsa to the required orientation, that is, perpendicular to the width of the path. Buoy task This year, the buoy task has two images, badge and tommy gun, on two different boards instead of one. For the YOLO network, both the images are easily distinguishable. We would be performing a horizontal scan to identify and localize on the board before bumping into it. So moving on to the torpedo task, which also has two different boards to shoot to. Our aim would be to first find and center on the right board, then proceed to center on the trapezium or star depending on the board, and then the torpedo will be shot. There is a risk of failing, in which case we shoot the torpedoes through the bigger hole. To increase our probability of success, we have not only increased the accuracy and stability of our localization, but also plan to use both YOLO and OpenCV for better estimation. Random finger task. Based on previous year's performance, we can localize on the finger very accurately. We have implemented a very simple approach for solving the anonymity of the pingers. That is, after centering on the finger, look for the task that is nearest according to the map. If fail to do so, go for the other task associated with the pingers. Bend task. We will detect the pair of bends as a whole with the help of an outward moving spiral motion and give feedback to the arm on the location of the handle and then try to remove it. Next, we would align our vehicle with the bin to increase the chances of successfully dropping the marker. And finally, closing in on the bin to a point where the possibility of error is pretty low. We have tested it for the case of open bins and we are pretty sure in that aspect. Octagon task. We first try to scan around an estimated position to find the table with the bottles on top. Then we pick up the bottles and scan in concentric octagonal parts to find the taller table. Given the colors on the table, yellow and green, it would be very easy to detect them because of their contrast with the ground. As soon as we find the dollar table, we drop the bottles off, head back to the middle table and move vertically upward from there until we hit the surface. After trying to pick or drop the bottle, we ensure the success of the attempt by looking back at the table to check whether the bottle is there or not. Since we couldn't work on testing our electrical subsystems in this pandemic, we tried to diversify our team towards the R&D. We started working on multiple research projects such as FPGA-based static target location, underwater GPS, industrial grade arm, etc. Since swimming pools were closed, we researched and developed a prototype of in-air waterproof testing method. As manufacturing and prototyping were paused during this lockdown, we remotely worked and enhanced our skills in CA simulation and design lockdown period for strengthening and expanding our simulation packages. Due to the lack of a GPU, we had to look for online options and lighter networks for ML training. Unexpectedly, our efficiency of code reviews and task planning improved, owing to the use of formal planning platforms. On the other hand, we are still missing a lot of things, like sleeping in the lab when someone is talking to you, asking seniors for treats day in and day out. Most importantly, lost the human interactions and random chit-chat that helped us keep awake at night to finish our tasks.